So congratulations with your Hawkeye, Mr. David Mack. I saw the first two episodes. Right? Uh, yeah, I was really... Um, Advanced or like the same way I, I like regular people do? Yeah, I, I watched it on Disney Plus uh, the morning after the morning it came out. Uh -huh. And I was super busy, but like I, I told myself like... Uh, I can watch this as long as I'm exercising the whole time, uh -huh. and that's what, that's how I'll fit my exercise in, and I'll feel good about like watching this, you know, right. in the morning. So it was a great show to exercise to, right? And I was, uh, yeah, I was really happy to see Echo make her entrance in the finale of the second episode, right? Yeah, I think I was mentioning to you, I um, it was kind of emotional for me. I kind of got chills when when Echo showed up. You know, the the actress totally pulled it off. Right. Alakwa Cox. It was an incredible. Were you involved in the Hawkeye the production, during the production? Or? I wasn't involved in the Hawkeye. I, I know Matt Fraction was, was involved in it. Yeah. Uh, and how about in Jessica Jones? How much were you involved? Oh, in Jessica Jones? Um, well, I was asked to uh, work on the opening titles for Jessica Jones. Right. And I did that, and we. Uh, we won, or we got nominated for an Emmy for the opening titles. So I went to the Emmys. Yeah, congratulations! I like, I saw that. Was which was like, yeah, really, you know, because we we worked on this book like 20 years ago. So I never would have imagined that, you know, 20 of years later, I go to the <laughs> Emmys for this book, right? Especially um, Emmys, right? It's just like you're you're just yeah. doing comics, and then you're. And one one of the cool things about the Emmys is just all the Emmys parties. Uh -huh. So I was at this Netflix party, right? Which was at Ted Sarantos' house, the guy who runs Netflix. Right. And basically, like every actor from every Netflix show is is there. All right. Like, like you know, it's like outside in his backyard. You know, there's you know drinks and food, and you're seeing all these people. And Melissa Rosenberg uh, is the uh, showrunner right. and the writer to uh, Jessica Jones, and I saw her talking with uh, Michael Coulter. Uh, Luke Cage right and uh, you know we, we had like emailed or something uh, or said hi on Twitter mm -hmm. and so I recognized her so I went to say hi mm -hmm. and she introduced me to Michael Coulter and she was like oh David I'm, I'm so happy to see you here I was just I just typed your name in the script to the second season and there's a there's an artist in that uh, in the second season and I was typing in the script that uh, his art like looks like yours and we mm -hmm. want to use all the art he does in, the, in it, at, we want you to do it. Right. You know? So she told me that at the thing, I was like, oh, that's that's amazing. Yeah, right. count. And she's like, so would you do that? And I was like, yeah, count me in. You know? yeah. So yeah, really like the showrunner, yeah. Melissa Rosenberg, like, you know, I already did the opening titles and we were already there with the, you know, there, there for an Emmy for it. But um, in the second season, that artist, I did all the, you know, the guy who does a painting of her, I did that and all of the uh, art that he has hanging up, you know, in his apartment. Yeah. So yeah, I got to be on the set, uh, you know, a couple times for that. You know, I was on the set of Jessica Jones. I was also on the set of, uh, of Daredevil. Right. Uh, the uh, the ninth episode where it's for the they don't Charlie Cox and Vincent D'Onofrio, you know, Wilson Fisk and Daredevil. They never come face to face until episode nine. Yeah. Right. And it's in that art gallery. Right. And so on that other side of the door of the art gallery, um, I, I'm in that. On that other As side of the door. As an extra? Or no, like... no, I'm, I'm just over there. Like, <laughs> so, like, I'm there, like, where, where Charlie, like, would walk through every time. And so we got to see, like, sort of like, the chemistry of them meeting for the first time yes, sir. ever, you know. So, yeah, because Joe Casada uh, invited me to the set. And then I asked Bill Sienkiewicz if he wanted to come with me. So Bill and I went. And, uh, That's awesome. Yeah, we were, we were right there on the other side. That's when we met Charlie Cox and Mr. Nofro. They, they were really awesome for us. And then I think it also worked out that I was able to do the, the titles of that yeah. um, because yeah. uh, I, I had done the main titles for the uh, the Captain America, the Winter Soldier film uh, before that. And yeah. on that one, the main titles are at the end of the film. It's all those like black and white drawings that, that come yeah. at the end of the Winter Soldier film. We said uh, earlier, like, uh, they announced about the Echo series, right? Yeah, uh, yeah they announced it. Uh, were you surprised? Like, did they tell you before? Were you... How was it? I had known that, uh, I mean, before the Disney situation, I, I had known that years ago they, they were trying to make an Echo TV series. Mm -hmm. um, same with, like, Jessica Jones. I, I had known probably, like, you know, over a decade ago they were trying to make a Jessica Jones series. Back, like, they thought it was going to be, like, on CBS or something, you know, yeah. a long time ago. You know, so sometimes it just takes those things a while to find the right place for them, you know, the right home. But 
the big project for me right now is uh, myself and Brian Michael Bendis, we're working on a TV series based on our creator-owned uh, comic called Cover. Um, this was like our, our big creator-owned project together. It kind of marks my return to interior art on a monthly schedule. <laughs> Sorry. And uh, <laughs> Bendis and I, you know, we've worked together many things since like 1993, but we had never um, done like a, a creator room project together. So we did that and uh, last year got nominated for three Eisner nominations, including uh, best graphic novel of the year. And so we're working on the sequel to this story, but also HBO Max is making a TV series of this. And uh, Brian is, uh, is, the, is the writer on it and I'm the director. So we've been super busy this is kind of like the thing we're working on hardest right now. Right? Uh, could you reveal any uh, cast members? Can't reveal anything more, you know, than that. Like HBO Max will have to, you know, announce all the details. Yeah. yeah. Super excited about that. Uh -huh. uh, Kabuki's still in the works uh, as a TV show. Right. Um, but yeah, just happy to be making like making comics with your friends. You know, that's that's the coolest thing. And what streaming service were you uh, were you thinking about Kabuki? Kabuki? Like, you know, I, I can't, I can't, you know. We'll I, yeah. I understand. Okay, okay, okay. okay. It'll work itself out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. You said before, um, before, before that, um, you were thinking about, you know, Echo, before, yeah. before the Disney situation. And were, were, were you, uh, were there any, um, actresses that you have in mind, you had in mind? No one had mentioned anyone to me. I love that, uh, you know, the character is, is deaf and indigenous. And I really love that they found an actor who's also deaf and indigenous. Yeah. And so I, I thought uh, Alakwa Cox was was amazing. Uh huh. That from, from what little I've seen so far, you know, she she really pulled it off. Yeah. Okay, so that's cool. I'm really happy for her. You have covers that you're doing right now, and now you're doing cons. How's the con situation these days? It's good, you know, we're at the San Diego Special Edition right now, and it's, uh, you know, it's not as crowded or as loud as it usually is, mm -hmm. and it's kind of like mellow and chill, but still everybody here is really enthusiastic and uh, just has a really good positive energy, and I think everyone's just happy to be back at conventions, you know. It's kind of a similar experience that I had, like, at the New York Con or mm -hmm. uh, Atlanta Dragon Con or Thought Bubble. Like everybody's just like really happy to be there. Tell me about your history in the of the, with, with the Philippines. Oh yeah, I did. Uh, I was very happy to have attended the uh, Asia Pop uh, convention. I think it was 2015 mm -hmm. uh, in Manila. And I had a great time in Manila, and then I also did a uh, a bookstore signing on Batman Day at Fully Booked. Uh -huh. Uh, which is like an amazing bookstore uh, yeah. in Manila, and it's uh, it's run by uh, Jaime Diaz. I don't know if you know him, yeah. but he's been a collector of my work for, for many years. I probably met him in San Diego, maybe 1999, yeah. 2000, probably like 20 years ago. I heard he has his own gallery. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, I've, I've been to his house. He showed me his, his gallery. He's an incredible collection of artwork. You know, yeah. Some really large Kent Williams paintings, canvas paintings. Got some James Dean or some David Mack. Uh, he's got an incredible collection of stuff. Right. So what do you miss about the Philippines? Is there anything that oh, you I miss? love the food in the Philippines. Uh -huh. uh, the, the people are very uh, friendly and happy. Right. I like, you know, how expressive everybody was and like they were just like so happy, you know, being at the convention. And I love visiting like the volcano uh, uh -huh. at Lake Tall. We took a boat, you know, uh -huh. to the island. Tall volcano. Yeah, we saw, you know, everything we could, you know, when we were there, trying to walk around as much as possible. Um, but yeah, the, the food, the people. Uh, <laughs> And I remember, yeah, I met, I met a lot of some artists there. Um, yeah, I was really happy with, with the whole, you know, I'd love to go back. The, and, and that bookstore was incredible. You know, probably the coolest bookstore I've ever seen. Yeah. And it has that incredible mural, original art mural in it. Um, that was, yeah, we did like, you can find it on YouTube. Uh, there's like, a, I think they have on YouTube, someone was filming the entire talk. So there were people who had been reading like my work on Kabuki from the Philippines who would send me letters 
for years, and I, I finally got to meet them in person. They came to my talk at the at the bookstore. How do you feel about that? You know, like having fans from a third world country or like somewhere outside the U.S. It was always cool getting um, getting mail like from other countries, you know. And I would, that's I would have a letters column in the back of Kabuki, so I, I would print like some of my favorite letters back there. And it's kind of cool to show up to another country you haven't been to before and meet these people who've been you know, sending you mail for years. Here is our ghost. Always have two phones. One that's for the bros. Two that's for the clothes. Wait, I might have three. 